Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. So if you've been following along here, you will know that a couple of weeks ago I uploaded my top three beginner patterning techniques. So I showed in that video how to move a dart, how to reduce gape and how to transform a dart. So the outcome of filming that video was this pattern. So I thought I would just sew it up and show you guys how I did it. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a viscose twill. It has these gorgeous little sprays on it and it's in this lovely blush pink colour. And on to the cutting out. This is my back. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a notch to mark the top of my zip and a couple of notches marking my dart leg. Popping a pin in at the point of the dart, marking where that pin pierces the fabric with my chalk pen. And drawing in my dart legs. So that's that done. Now to pin up my dart. First of all at the point, then making sure my notches are matched up, then pinning through the chalk line on top, out through the chalk line on the bottom, and back up through again and ready to stitch. Starting at the bottom of the dart legs with a back stitch, following that chalk mark the whole way up and pulling my threads to finish. I'll give my dart a press and tie off those threads off camera and this is the result. So now that that's done, I'm ready for my skirt two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a notch this time to mark the bottom of my zip. So that's that all cut out. Now to add it to my bodice. So just laying my bodice over the top, right sides together and pinning. stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. And I went ahead and finished my edges on the overlocker and pressed that seam. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my centre back. So off camera, I've ran that edge through the overlocker, just from that top zip notch down to the hem. And here, laying one side over the other, right sides together, making sure everything's lined up as it should be, and pinning into place. And ready to stitch from that top zip notch down to the bottom one, with the longest stitch length on my machine, and then from the bottom zip notch to the hem, with a regular stitch. So starting with the back stitch, Coming down to that bottom zip notch, adjusting my stitch length, back stitching again, and sewing right down to the hem. Finishing with a back stitch. So I've went ahead and pressed that seam open. I've also added a little bit of lightweight interfacing just to support the zip. And for this dress, I'm using a standard concealed zip. Lining it up with the seam allowance on one side and using my standard zipper foot to attach it. I've placed my needle as close to those zipper teeth as I can get, taking this nice and gently the whole way down. So 
starting and finishing with the back stitch. So that's one side done. I'll do exactly the same with the other side off camera. So that's my zip all in place. Now to remove those machine tacking stitches. And once it's all done, this is how it looks. Happy with that. So now to finish the zip, I just want to add a facing just to protect my skin from that zipper tape. So I've cut myself a rectangle of fabric. I'm just lining it up with the seam allowance on one side and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Sewing at about half of my seam allowance. And back stitching to finish. So that's my facing all attached on one side. Super pleased with this. So that's as much as I can do on the back for now. So on to the front. My fabric underneath is on the fold. A notch to indicate my gathering lines and a notch at the top and bottom of the fold line. So the first thing to do here is to gather down the neck. So I'm going to run two lines of stitches between those notches you've just seen me snip. So using the longest stitch length on my machine, starting at the first notch with a back stitch, sewing within my seam allowance and pulling my threads to finish. So that's my first line done. Moving my needle a little bit further to the right and doing exactly the same thing again. So now to gather that fabric down, I'm leaving the bottom two threads as they are and just holding on to the top two and pushing that fabric along. So that's that done. Just measuring here to make sure I've gathered enough. And I have, so tying off my threads. And to make it a little bit easier to sew later on, I'm just going to press the gathers down. So that's all the prep work required for my bodice. So on to the skirt. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch to indicate the bottom of my pocket and one at the top of the fold line. So that's my skirt all cut out. So before I can add this to my bodice, I have a little bit of prep work to do. And the first of which is to add a little bit of strength to that pocket opening. So I'm using some super lightweight cotton foil interfacing, pressing it into place. And now that that's done, I want to add just a little decorative touch. And for this dress, I've chosen piping for that. So I'm using this satin viscose I've cut on the bias, some craft cotton, and my pin tuck foot. Folding that fabric along its length, enclosing that cotton twine, placing my needle as close to it as possible and just stitching the whole way along. Taking this nice and easy, trying to make sure that my fabric and cotton are in the same groove on my foot the whole way down, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. That's my piping all prepared and ready to be added to my skirt. So lining up the raw edges of the piping with the raw edges of the pocket, pinning, and to the machine now to tack into place. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length and I'm two or three millimeters away from the piping's edge. So that's my piping all tacked into place. And of course I've done exactly the same on the other side. And now that that's done, I'm ready for the pocket itself. I have two layers of fabric underneath both pattern pieces. So that's those all cut out. 
and I'm firstly going to attach the one on the left to my skirt. So laying it with my skirt right sides together, pinning into place and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way down and back stitching to finish. So I finish that edge on the overlocker and here just pressing the pocket away from the skirt but making sure that my seam allowance in underneath is butted up against my pocket. Ready to take to the machine now to understitch. So I'm stitching through the pocket, through the seam allowance in underneath, using a longer stitch length. I'm a couple of millimetres away from the piping and this understitching is just going to help the pocket bag stay nicely tucked away in underneath, starting and finishing with a back stitch. And after it's had a good press, this is how it looks. Happy with that. So now for my second pocket piece. So just like before, laying it right sides together, lining up the edges of my pocket and my side seam, pinning into place and ready to stitch. Starting with a back stitch at my one centimeter seam allowance, taking this nice and gently, trying to maintain that beautiful curve along the bottom edge and finishing with a back stitch. I'll finish that edge off camera and give it a press, which you can see here. And now to complete the pockets, I just need to secure that top edge and the side seam edge. So to the machine to tack into place, stitching within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and finish. So that's the top edge all secured. Exactly the same thing on the side seam edge. So I've trimmed away any excess piping, given my pockets a final press, and this is the result. Super happy with these. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join my skirt to my bodice at the waist. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my notches. and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. I ran that edge through the overlocker giving that waist seam a good press which you can see here and now that that's done I'm ready to join my front and back together at the shoulder. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges, pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So that edge has been finished, the seam has been pressed. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add that touch of piping to the neckline. So just like the pockets before, I'm lining up my raw edges the whole way around the neck. And I'll do exactly the same on both armholes and to the machine now to tack into place. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length, I'm sewing two or three millimetres away from the piping's edge, trying to make sure that those seam edges are lined up the whole way around, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's the neck piping tacked into place. And as I mentioned, I've done exactly the same with the armholes. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up both the neckline and armholes. And for this dress, I've chosen a facing for that. So my fabric underneath the front facing is on the fold. I have a little notch at the fold line on the neck and two layers underneath the back facing. 
so that's those all cut out and ready to be joined at the shoulder. My fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. And off camera I've ran that edge through the overlocker and pressed it. I've also ran the bottom edges of both front and back facing through the overlocker just to finish them off. And then to crispen up the neck just slightly I've added some of that lightweight interfacing and now that that's done, I'm ready to join my facing to my dress. Laying it over the top, right sides together. Lining up that centre notch. Lining up my shoulders. And my centre back. And ready to stitch. Starting at the centre back with the back stitch. Sewing at my 1cm seam allowance, taking this nice and gently the whole way around and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my facing attached at the neck. I finished off the edges, clipped out the deepest part of that curve and just like I did on the pocket before, I've pressed the facing away from the bodice but made sure that that seam alliance in underneath is butted up against the facing, ready to understitch. Sewing through the facing, through the seam alliance in underneath, about a millimetre or two away from the piping edge, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's had a good press, happy with that. So now just to finish off that centre back at the top, placing my facing and my centre back seam right sides together, pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimetre seam allowance and back stitching to finish. And after it's had a good press, this is how it looks. Nice and neat and tidy. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my armholes. So currently my facing and bodice are wrong sides together. I need them to be right sides together in order to sew them. So to get them right sides together, I'm going to use the burrito method. So rolling up the fabric on one side, laying it on top of the other shoulder, flipping the fabric out underneath the roll, so my fabric is now right sides together and I have that roll sandwiched in between, pinning into place and ready to stitch. So stitching here in exactly the same way as I did the pockets and the neckline before. At my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. I finished off that edge and now I'm ready to pull the whole thing through to the right side. So just going in between the facing and the bodice at the shoulder, picking up the dress front, pulling the whole lot through the shoulder to the right side. And once it's had a good press, this is how it looks. Super happy with this. I've got my piping running right along the edge, my armhole all neatly finished off. So now to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So rolling up one side of the dress, laying it on top of the other shoulder, flipping the fabric out from underneath, laying my facing on top and pinning. And I've sewed that up off camera. And here, just pulling the whole thing through to the right side. And 
again. Once it's had a good press, this is how it looks. So my neckline and armholes are all nicely enclosed with that facing. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up the side seams. My fabric is right sides together, pulling the facing up at the underarm, making sure my edges are lined up. And pinning into place. Stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that edge has been finished, it's had a good press. And this is how it looks. Happy with that. So now the last thing I have to do is to finish off the hem. And for this dress I've chosen a double folded hem. So folding by about half of my hem alliance, pressing into place, folding again by the same amount and pressing into place. I'll finish that off camera. And ready to stitch. So starting at the center back, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here. Sewing right along that inner crease edge. And finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I've got my pockets all in place with that gorgeous piping. I've added in some thread loops here because I'm going to pop a belt on this. You'll see that in a second. Got my gathers all in place around the neck. My piping around the neckline and armholes. And on the back, I've just added a little button and another thread loop. My zip along with its facing. And that gorgeous double folded hem. And this is what it looks like on. So I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. I love the length of the skirt. I love the pockets, the shape of the skirt. I love the bodice, those gathers around the neck. I love the touches of piping and the belt I've added here I've already done a video on. I uploaded that last week, I shall link it in the description box below. But I think it just gives a really gorgeous finishing touch to a dress like this. Love this one! So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do and I shall see you guys on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!